Hi, very warm welcome to Dusty Shelf Collectibles. Today we're talking Corgi's Short Sunderland. Yeah, hi, so uh, you may have seen I did a video the other week where I walked around Hendon and um, just showed you generally what's in the museum there. Um, and pride on display just outside the shop there was the Short Sunderland, which I had the uh, uh, I guess the experience, the privilege, if you like, of walking through it was, uh, you know, it's open to the public, you can walk through there yourself. Um, but for me, uh, it was just a really great thing to do. I really enjoyed walking through there and seeing the flu fuselage from the inside. Um, later in the video, I then had a walk around the shop, and uh, yeah, I was a little bit surprised by some of the prices. I mean, it was very, very expensive in there. Um, and I do have some die-cast planes in my collection, so I came back and I do have the Short Sunderland. So I thought what I'd do is just do a quick video on this. I mean, these, you know, I was looking at the planes in the shop there, and um, some of them are 60 odd pounds for a very small one. Um, these corgi ones, this is a 1999 model, you can pick these up from I don't know anywhere from 30 to 45 pounds if you you know go on one of the uh, auction sites so they're not really expensive for what they are they're a very nice model and quite heavy so I thought what I'd do is just show you what's what's in the box with these and just do a quick review on it so as always take it over to the bench so I can film from above and um, let's go through it and have a look what's inside yeah, so if you saw my video the other week, um, walking through Hendon, you know that I did walk through a short Sunderland, and uh, I do have this in the collection, which is uh, a Corgi model of, indeed, a short Sunderland. Um, this one is the uh, short Sunderland III for the Royal Australian Air Force. Um, it's part of the Aviation Archive collection by Corgi. Um, sadly, my box has seen better days, but again, these models... Um, the reason for doing these videos is, and the reason I collect these, I pick these up in uh, boot fairs and uh, different sales and things, and these are extremely cheap, you know, comparative. When I walked around the museum shop, I mean, I, I pointed out there was a couple of smaller die-cast models there, 60, 70 pounds. These you can pick up 25, 30 pounds. So, you know, if you're into your aircraft and into your die-cast, there is a collection out there that, um, you know, is affordable. Um, and, um, you know, if you're not looking for pristine boxes, they are, you know, reasonably priced. So anyway, I wanted to go around this very quickly. Um, so this is scale 1 to 144, um, so 1 to 144, um, and has a particular story about this, this particular aircraft. I'll go into that in a minute. Um, just on the side of the box, it gives details on optional accessories, rotating propellers, rubber tyres, and removable undercarriage, which is interesting for a flying boat. But um, yeah, there, there is um, there is an optional wheel uh, variant that you can put on here. Finally, detailed liveries does come with a display stand. Again, the same repeated on there, and the same repeated on there. Nothing on the back of the box. Um, the only thing it does say is it does give it does age this to 1999, which is the copyright. So I'm guessing this is a 1999 kit. I know it was retooled, I think, in about six or seven years ago. So this is one of the older models. Anyway, let's have a look inside. Right, let me just slide this open. And see what we have in here. So just a, a card there. Charting the course of aviation history, detailed models. Doesn't give any release number. Free information pack. And then some information about, uh, yeah, about the model. Nothing really of detail in there. So I did think these were limited edition and were certificated, but um, clearly not. So it just gives the model number 48803. Okay, I'll put that to one side. So then taking off the casing, you can see the yellow, <laughs> that's gone yellow over the years. Um, inside here, obviously, got our display stand. But, uh, this is die cast, this is plastic, and they just fit together. You've got your optional wheels at the side here. I'm not gonna take those out because I'm not gonna fit those. Um, and then the aircraft itself, which is extremely heavy. Obviously being die-cast, it is a solid, solid model. Indeed, the propellers do go round. 
Um, yeah, it's, it's a not a bad model. It, not not a bad model at all. You know, for what it's uh, for its subject matter. I mean, this is a this is a large aircraft, and you know, it's got a fair bit of detail on here. We've got rails on the side that have been fitted. Obviously, the aerials on the back here, the gun emplacements with the you know the guns on there. That that's dropped, dropped out. This is the the piece that uh, fits in underneath. That um, basically you take that out so that it can it can mount to the stand. The stand just fits underneath like so, and it just uh, fits on there. I will mount that in a second. Yeah, so it's really really good model. Yeah, so in the range, I mean, there are many limited editions um, that you can get if you you're into that sort of thing. So you can you can get limited edition ones, but uh, I just looked up this one isn't one of those. Um, but as I said, there, there are many incarnations of this uh, short Sunderland that Horn, uh, sorry, that Corgi have released. Um, but the more recent ones, they're just they're just prohibitively well, they're prohibitively expensive for, in my opinion, um, for my budget. You know, I don't know what the, I will look up the current uh, cost of this. Now, I said I wasn't going to touch the wheel area, but uh, I've just been uh, having a little, little play off camera. It's taken me a little while to work it out, but actually, um, over the back here, I'm just going to put that down on there before I damage it. I'll put that down. Um, there are these four little little pieces here, um, and these are part of the stand. So these came in these pockets, um, and they mount in pairs. I um, don't know whether you can see this, but the two halves mount together, and in each half there's a little bucket that sits around the stand. So you put these either side of the of the ball joint, like so. Very fiddly way of doing it. I guess it's so that um, what they can do is make one stand that fits a lot of aircraft, um, and then the stand this pushes into the socket in the bottom of the bottom of the plane, like. Right, take two. I edited that one out. This is probably why they give you two sets of them. Because uh, it's extremely fiddly. It's not the easiest of things to do. And, uh, yeah, it just flew off across the workshop. I had to go find that piece. That piece. So, put them together. Bring the aircraft in. And supposedly, this just pushes into the bottom of the plane. Like so and mounts it onto the stand here, yeah, perfect, like that, there you go, so uh, yeah, probably why they give you two sets of those, so if you are buying a second hand set of this, make sure they've got these little black pieces in, otherwise your stands can be useless, if you want to display it that is, and then with the stand you can pick whichever angle or that you want your plane to be displayed at. Right, let's take some uh, detail shots. The Short Sunderland Mark III first flew in October 1937, and it's a specific design uh, requested by the Air Ministry for a general purpose uh, reconnaissance flying boat. Um, and if you remember in Hendon, I had pointed out the curves underneath the body of the aircraft and how, how superb they look, and um, you can only imagine what this is like, you know, landing on water. Um, the purpose during the war of the Sunderland flying boats was generally for RAF Coastal Command. Um, they flew um, very, you know, vital, vital roles in protecting the sea lanes, as I say, reconnaissance, also search and rescue as well. Um, so uh, you can see how heavily armed the aircraft is with its gun emplacements on the front and rear. This wasn't, you know, this was to protect itself from enemy fighters because it was flying straight into um, you know, the, the the battle zone, if you like. So anyway, this particular air aircraft, 39999, um, saw active service during the Second World War, and this is why it's been picked as um, one of the commemorative models for the uh, Aviation Archive by Corgi. Um, so anyway, this one, um, it took off from RAF Mountbatten, where all of these Sunderlands were based, to locate a dinghy of a Wellington that had ditched into the channel. So on reaching the search area, this Sunderland, along with uh, Whitley patrol aircraft, were attacked. The Sunderland lost height and landed onto the open seas. Uh, so it did get down and land, but as it was taxiing to a halt, 
uh, it was just seen to explode and disappeared under the waves, uh, losing all the crew. Suspected to have been downed by, you know, enemy fire or torpedo from a, a U-boat. Yeah, so in terms of the uh, Corgi models, I, I think, I mean, I think these, I've always thought these are superb. Um, I think they're expensive for what they are. I mean, you know, there's not a lot of function on there. They purely are a display piece. And the fact they're die cast, you know, does become somewhat um, academic when they're on display. However, you get a few of these lined up of different aircraft and these look fantastic if you get them in a display case. So um, I just wanted to share, as I say, share this one that I've got in the collection. I do have a few aircraft in the collection. So if you'd like to see more of these, please do let me know um, and we'll review a few more. But um, they are, as I say, you can pick them up on the secondhand market or the resale market. You know, they're a reasonable price. I don't think they're too bad at all. And you can build quite a nice collection of these. Anyway, we'll leave that there. Thank you ever so much, as always, for watching. Um, if you like this kind of thing, please do like and subscribe. And um, yeah, thanks again, and I'll catch you on the next one.